It may seem surprising that the properties that enable certain viruses, such as HIV, the cause of AIDS, to cause deadly diseases, also make them promising candidates as vectors for introducing new genes into cells. When HIV infects a cell, it deposits its genes in the form of RNA into the cell's cytoplasm. Reverse transcriptase enzymes from the HIV particle now copy the RNA, converting the single-stranded RNA into double-stranded DNA. The HIV DNA is transported into the nucleus and integrated into the host cell's DNA. The ability to integrate into a host cell's chromosome and the fact that HIV can infect either dividing or non-dividing cells make HIV a good candidate as a gene transfer vector. In contrast, many other viruses infect only dividing cells or do not integrate their DNA into the nucleus. Because HIV is a known human pathogen, its genome must be modified extensively to be safe for use in gene transfer. To construct a safe and effective vector, the accessory genes VPR, VPU, NEF, VIF, and TAT which encode HIV virulence factors for disease, have been removed entirely. Other protein encoding genes called GAG, PAL, ENV, and REV, which are necessary for virion production, have been put into DNA helper plasmids to be provided only in tissue culture for vector production. The GAG gene provides the capsid monomer. The PAL gene provides reverse transcriptase and ENV provides the envelope glycoprotein. The product of the REV gene does not enter viral particles, but is important for exporting viral mRNAs from the nucleus to the cytoplasm during the infection. Each helper plasmid drives its gene expression from a well-studied promoter of another virus, such as cytomegalovirus, or CMV, or respiratory syncytial virus, or RSV. Other genetic elements, such as polyadenylation sites, are important for the stability of RNA molecules transcribed from these gene constructs. The HIV envelope glycoprotein targets HIV to specific cells in the body. The envelope glycoproteins bind to receptor proteins on CD4 plus T cells of the immune system, and in doing so, initiate infection. This binding specificity narrows the host cell range of HIV vectors and limits the usefulness of the HIV ENV gene in gene therapy. To remove this host cell limitation, the ENV gene in the helper vector has been replaced with an envelope glycoprotein gene from another virus called the vesicular stomatitis virus. The vesicular stomatitis virus glycoprotein, or VSVG, interacts with phospholipids rather than with specific receptor molecules. A wide range of host cells can bring in the virus by endocytosis, after which the viral envelope and vesicle fuse, releasing the capsid into the cytoplasm, where infection continues. From what is left of the HIV genome, the new gene therapy vector takes the long terminal repeat, or LTR, end sequences from R, to U5, which are required for genome integration into host cell DNA. The vector also uses a packaging signal from the start of the GAG gene and a region called the Infectivity Enhancing Polypurine Tract, or PPT. The gene of interest, called the transgene, can be just about anything. But let's use the example of a gene that encodes green fluorescent protein, which can serve as a visual marker of infection. The transgene is put under control of a CMV promoter. To further enhance transgene expression, other genetic elements are also added. This combination of vectors is called a lentiviral gene transfer system. Lentiviruses are defined as retroviruses, such as HIV, that cause infections that progress slowly over many years. Although it is named for a lentivirus, it in fact includes genetic elements from a diverse set of human and animal viruses, each contributing specific properties to infection and functioning together like the parts of a machine. 
To produce infective virions, the HIV-derived transgene vector plus the three helper plasmids are introduced by a process called transfection into a tissue culture cell line. The DNA enters the nucleus, where the transgene vector integrates into the host DNA, just as normal HIV DNA would. RNA molecules are transcribed from the various promoters in the DNA. The RNAs enter the cytoplasm, where they're translated into proteins. The proteins include the capsid, reverse transcriptase, envelope, and rev proteins. The full-length RNAs containing the transgene are then packaged into the viral particles. As a result of transfection with the helper plasmids and the transgene vector, the cell becomes a factory for producing virions. The virions are collected for gene transfer experiments. In one experiment, the virions were injected into the brains of rats to analyze the expression of the gene of interest, in this case, the gene for green fluorescent protein. The virion would be expected to enter the brain cells. Once inside, the vector RNA would be converted into DNA by reverse transcriptase. The new DNA would then enter the nucleus, where it would integrate into the host DNA. Notice that the integrated DNA contains the long terminal repeats and a few other regulatory regions, but nothing else from the HIV genome. Without the other components of the HIV genome, this piece of DNA will stay put and no HIV viruses can be produced. However, the integrated DNA does contain the gene of interest, the gene for green fluorescent protein. This micrograph depicts neuronal cells that have integrated and expressed the green fluorescent protein. Neurons are identified by a red fluorescent antibody specific for a neuronal protein. Neuronal cells that also express the green fluorescent protein from the transgene glow green, although the combination of red and green produces a yellowish color. The successful introduction of the fluorescent transgene in rats led to another experiment in which the vector introduced nerve growth factor into a rat brain with nerve damage. The nerve growth factor was expressed successfully, and it enhanced the regeneration of nerves. Subsequently, a clinical trial with nerve growth factor was begun with Alzheimer's patients in the hope of promoting nerve regeneration.